What's up guys and welcome back to the Thrash and Supply channel. Today we're going to hit a bike check with my buddy, Matt. Matt, what do we have behind us? This is a 1990 FXRS. I bought basically as like a rolling chassis with an engine. Made it exactly how I wanted. That is 33 years old right now. I asked you to do this bike check because your bike's different. It's really high and you ride it like a maniac. Your bike looks sweet. I love the paint job. So let's start out with the front end and kind of the ride height and, and what you built this bike, what you set it up for. All I do is ride the canyons, Mulholland all through there. That's all I've done my whole life is rip through those canyons. So I like the bike real tall so it doesn't scrape. I can basically ride it like a dirt bike, do whatever I want on it and not have to worry about everything scraping. This isn't actually the front end I built for the bike. I built another one for the bike, but I beat it all up, so I pulled this one off my Dyna. This is an FXDX front end built by Racetech, valved and sprung to my weight. Everything you can do inside of a 39 millimeter fork is done to that. What's the height we have on that? The DX front end is about two and a half over what the stock would be. And I actually have two inch drop trees that I normally run with this front end. I just haven't had a chance to put them on. I usually run around three inches over in the front, which right now I have the tube slid like down in the tree yeah, which the is super sketchy out. yeah so, <laughs> i have them in there so they're actually tucked in it tracks weird right now because the back's so tall Our let's talk about the back uh, I, I made a note yesterday i was like your shocks are real straight up and down normally they're to this bolt hole yes, right this is the rs or the normal position the r the rs position this is the rt or rp position it raises it like an inch so i drilled these struts out because i like the way these ones look and put blanks in there those are like head bolts from harley i moved them back to get another inch and then i have 14 inch rwd shocks and then this is a really good friend of mine fxr forever he makes inch and a half swing arm lift kit so let me Sorry. get this straight you went back here which gave you an inch yes you went an inch and a half up this bike probably would have came with a 12 12 12 inch shock so these are about six i'm at about 16 and a half right now 16 and a half so you're yeah. four and a half inches High. higher in the back yeah. you're about three and a half inches higher in the front while we're talking about height another thing you can notice right off the bat you have a rad set of p54 thrashing pegs which these are only actually pegs i run yeah these are actually some of our pegs from like i could tell the, the tread these pattern are, is old i pulled these off my dyna i have a brand new set for these but when i built this i was kind of scrounging for parts trying not to spend a fortune some of the stuff i pulled from boxes pulled i have old p54 pegs laying around so i just started scrounging through stuff i actually have a brand new set for this sitting at home also notice there normally they would come up here so how much height did you put you'd put a custom some yeah, these, riser on it. those brackets raise them up also an inch and a half to give me a little bit more clearance. And are you still rubbing on these pegs with yes. this? Yes. That's why I run this pipe. I love this pipe. I've ran a ton of pipes and they all scare me because I scrape yeah. and it pushes the front wheel and I wear holes through them. So I started running this pipe because yep. specifically for that reason. And this is our thrashing OG system yes. on your Evo. Removable baffle. Are you running a stock engine with this thing? I see you have a Makuni. So you got an SNS air filter. You got the OG yep. thrashing pipe, but anything on the inside of this thing? Yeah, it's, it's a built 80 inch Evo. It runs real good. It's fun. Okay. It's Okay. super fun to ride i just came from my last bike had a built 120 in it and yeah. it was a monster you know made mid 120 horsepower you posted something with yeah. your pipe on it i went from that to this and i actually wasn't really that disappointed it's high compression branch heads i don't know what cams in it because i bought it like that but i had to tear it all apart and redo a bunch of stuff it was had bad blow by when i bought it i bought it as a project for real cheap i put a bunch of money into it and put re-ringed it and honed it and put it all back together had no idea what it was going to be yeah. and it actually rips like it runs really good for what it is stock five speed yeah stock five speed another thing that really caught my eye on your bike i love flames uh, that's why we have the flame gloves i'm yet to actually do a flame paint job on my bike myself which i'm like really want to do you got a sweet one you do that what did it come on the bike or what's going on with that no i had a different tank for it i ran it for like a month and i found this on ebay of all places you don't know what you're getting no matter yeah. what like it looked good in the pictures and i didn't really like the color and it came and i, I cut and 
and buffed it and put it on and I fell in love with it. As yeah. a kid, you see flames on something. Yeah, that's it's hot that, rod. Yeah, it's hot rod. That's what, I love flames. I mean, I have them tattooed all over my arms. <laughs> like, I love them. And I was super stoked to find that for a smoking deal on eBay, so. Let's go into kind of your bar and riser setup, your handlebar bag. What do you what do you got going up, up here? I just got this recently when this dropped, the new Thrashing handlebar bag slim. I love this bag because I can fit a water bottle in it. I don't like to run bags unless I'm traveling if I have to. I like to be able to stuff my sweatshirt in my fairing and grab a water bottle and go. You said your fairing and it's way higher up than a normal fairing. I think you kind of referenced it when the camera was off. What do you call this setup right here? Uh, Ventura style. All right. Do you know I, where it came from? Ventura high and tight. Okay. They started doing it. I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. They have a certain look about their bikes. I have some friends from Ventura. I lived down there for a little while and I've always liked that high and thin and I, it actually helps block the wind up high like that, but it's narrow enough that it feels like you're riding a dirt bike or without a fairing. Yeah. Everybody knows like you have a fairing on your bike, you take it off and you're like, whoa, it feels so much, it feels lighter and more nimble. Yeah. And that's kind of what I wanted or what I was going for. So I built this bracket for this to raise it up high. I also noticed these look like maybe you made these yeah. shorty levers. How much you cut off? What do we have going here? I don't know. I put my fingers on them at the bend and then marked them and cut them with a the sawzall. Two and finger levers. <laughs> yeah, and then powder coated them cleaned them up with the grinder. These are all late model switch housings. So FXR would have the square ones. Yeah. I wired all that in because I like the more round yeah. updated look. Or you'd see that maybe on a like 99, 2000 yeah. FXR, like two or three or, or whatever they are. Or on Dynas. Yeah. I got, these are off of a Dyno. I right took on. all this stuff off Dyna and then Brimbo Bagger, Front Brake Master. What's this? That's a volt gauge. Okay. All right. <laughs> so the only time I've ever been stranded on the road is when my charging system takes a, a crap. So I made this little gauge mount and gauge so I can basically watch my charging system on the road. If it starts overcharging, I know to pull the unplug the stator. If it undercharges, then I know to pull over and change my battery and I can make it home, you know? Makes a lot of sense. All right, one thing. I don't even know how high are your bars and risers. What do we got going uh, here? These are 15 inch bars with a two inch pullback. I like my bars super tall. There's not really too many bar and riser combos that get this height and this narrow. These are 28 inches wide, so they're super narrow. Again, high and tight. It just feels more comfortable for me. You know, you have the Saddleman step-up seat. You see those on a lot of the FXRs over here. But as we get to the back of the wheel, that brake is not normally on this FXR. So tell us what you did to kind of get that all dialed in. That's a four-piston bagger Brembo off of a touring bike and a friend of mine makes a mount. Basically it just clamps onto the swing arm and lets you use a stock Harley caliper, which is cool because you can go to Harley and get pads for it anytime. Yep. And then it comes with a couple spacers and bolts that together. Way better stopping power than that single piston that was on it. So your bike already is leaning over more than it should. And then you also have inch and a half or something yeah, like in, that. inch and a half spacer. Same, my friend's a machinist. He makes that FXR forever stuff. And he gave me that because I could barely get my bike off the kickstand when it was lean. <laughs> it yeah, leaned over so deal. far, it's hard to get at the end of a di long day. It's hard to get off the kickstand. Well, I've seen you ride this thing like a bat out of hell, but I think we got to show them how you rip this thing. All right, sounds good. Ready to get on? Hell yeah. Let's do it. Thanks for checking out my 1990 FXR. I'll see you guys out in the canyons.